<laughs> well, howdy, friends. This is Steve Kaufman. And I'm, what I'm going to try to work on with you today is to learn some speed drills and get your right and left hands a little better coordinated and give you some tips and techniques in order to gain that speed a little bit. Everyone wants to have more speed, and, and there's a philosophy behind that. But I think what we should do before I get going on this is to tune you up, okay? <clears throat> so here's your first string, E. Then your second string, B. Third string, G. Fourth string, D. Here's your fifth string, A. And then your sixth string, E. And of course, some of you may have already noticed. Now, what's that black dot on his peg head? And what I've got here is an IntelliTouch tuner. And let me, let me just kind of show you what that looks like. It has a little spring on the back and it holds it onto the peg head, which I kind of like. Uh, it's got a little piezo pickup in the top part. And uh, so it cuts off all the outside noise and I can leave it clamped on here. And then actually, let me bring it back out. I can, you can see the, the numbers on there. <clears throat> it's a chromatic tuner, so it tunes it up and takes us, you know, kind of takes some of the guesswork out there, out of uh, tuning. So that's what you'll see in the back there, okay? Okay, first thing I want to try to do is give you an idea of what I talk about with right and left hand mechanics. I feel uh, my philosophy on speed is that there's not a lot of tricks to it. What you have to do is you have to have your right hand working correct and your left hand working correct. And if both units are working correctly or your machine is working right, then what you have to do is just oil the machinery by practicing. So therefore, what I've found is that I've never found what my top speed was. And I can tell you an interesting story is, is um, you know, a lot of times guitar players and banjos and mandolins, you cut heads, or in other words, you try to outdo the other. And, and usually when I was probably about 17 or 18 doing this, because <clears throat> I probably hurt myself now, but one of the greatest feelings I had in the world was playing Foggy Mountain Breakdown with a banjo player. And each time it went around, it got faster and faster. And, it, and this was an accomplished banjo player. He writes a lot of books and does a lot of the shows. And after about 15 times of jacking the speed, he had to put it in the case. Okay. Now, for a guitar player to blow away a banjo player on Foggy Mountain Breakdown, that's like the ultimate, you know. And it, it hasn't happened too many times since then. But the the point is, I didn't know how fast I could go, and I didn't know that I could outrun this banjo player. Uh, speed is not one of the most important things. Probably the greatest thing you can have is good tone. And as you get faster, you start to lose some of that tone. So let's look at some of the things that's going to gain better tone. First thing with the, uh, let's, let's just look at the uh, left hand because that might be the easiest thing to do. So the left hand, things you have to consider is, is you can't push down very hard with the left hand. The harder you push down, the harder it is to get your fingers released. The more energy you spend pushing down, the more energy you're going to have to spend mentally to turn that, those muscles loose to release. Okay, so one thing you'll want to try to do in your practice to help speed up a little bit is to uh, play with a very, very light touch with the left hand, and that's easier said than done. What actually happens at that time is the right hand gets quieter too. Okay, we'll show some exercises in a minute for that. But the best way to, that I have found to hold the left hand, and some of you may already be doing this, but for those that are not, you always want to put your fingers down as far in the frets as possible. It takes less pressure. To, to push that note down here, I'm on a D. If I use the same pressure and bring my finger back just a hair, it gets to a buzz and I have to push harder. Okay? So watch out for that. Use a real feather light touch. Also, the harder you push down, the farther your fingers recoil. And you've seen people play that they look like they're, they're playing like this. It's because they've really got a death grip on there. They're probably wearing their frets out. They're definitely wearing the ends of their fingers off. You know, you can see my calluses. They're not, they're, you know, I got some grooves in there. But they're not like some people's where you see they have, it looks like dimes are glued on the end of their finger. Okay? So it doesn't take a lot of pressure here. Another thing is that I don't have a lot of skin touching the neck, which means I can shoot up and down the neck very easily. In fact, from this position, I can pivot way out if I need to. See how light that is? Very light touch. Uh, when you see people play, 
and you look at them and you say, it doesn't look like they're pushing down hardly at all. It's because they're hardly pushing down at all. And that's what they've learned how to do. Okay, so keep a very light touch. Keep very little skin on the back of the neck. If you use uh, a grip like, like a baseball bat, it's going to slow you down as you move. You've got too much friction there. Okay? So just the edge of your thumb. In fact, for me, what callus is up is right on this knob of my thumb. And that's from the, it going kind of sideways into the neck. But that's the only part that's touching. And now if I have to go into the base side, I, I will touch a little bit here, but that's just because of the width of the neck. All right? Now, that's going to help your left hand out to be real light. What's going to help your right hand out is to use momentum in your right hand. And we've touched on this in some of my videos before. Uh, but I just want to do it for those that, that don't have the entire library. <laughs> okay? What we're talking about in momentum on this right hand is a real wide swing using a great depth of pick. And the reason for that is, for one, is that your right hand should act as a metronome. Now, this is what's going to help uh, in order so that your right hand doesn't lock up. It'll help in your speed. If you're ever, if you ever playing, this is an example, if you're ever playing and you crash in the same spot every time, your right hand is, um, there's a mechanical failure and it's usually the right hand. It, you can't get that run worked out. There's something always going wrong with it. It's that right hand. Okay? It's probably not the left hand. It's because you have a mechanical failure. So if you get used to using your right hand as a metronome or as a pendulum going back and forth, then you won't, uh, this will help in the right hand. And, and what I mean is that, say, say you're hitting, well, actually, flat pickers, all we do is we go like this. But see, you don't know if I'm hitting quarter notes. You don't know if I'm hitting the eighth note. There's the eighth note on the upswing. You don't know that. What's actually happening is this right hand's going like this. It's just constantly going back and forth. It's your mind that tells your right hand what notes to trigger when you're playing. But your right hand just goes back and forth. Now we're going to get into some really complicated type runs with a lot of uh, uh, synchronized, uh, syncopated runs. And the right hand is actually just going to be doing this. It, the right hand doesn't care. And, the, and my whole point here is once you get this right hand to go back and forth as a metronome does or a pendulum, it doesn't care what your left hand is doing. It's just going to be working over here, just doing what it's always used to doing. Okay? So even if I start going this speed, it doesn't look very fast, but we're actually going... We're at about this speed. Even if I go to here, that's going about this fast, and anyone within reach of this video can move their hand that fast. That's not that fast, but it's getting it organized so that this is going down on the downbeat, up on the upbeat, back and forth, just like that. Now, as you're doing runs, and we'll hit them in a second, so don't, don't get ahead of me now. As we're doing runs, if you've got a, a run that's, say, uh, eighth notes, where the uh, first note is on the third string, the, the second eighth note is on the second string, you still have to go down on the first one, come at, uh, here's your pendulum, going to come up on the second string. Okay, just because it's next to it, don't go two downs in a row. Because what you've actually done, this is, here's the example, it's if we were looking at this. Let's see. Like that. Here's a down, up, down, up, down. If I went down, down, up, down, up. Okay, now to me, that's totally backwards. It works for some people and it works fine. For me, it doesn't work because I've always got it in my head. Down swing on a down beat, up swing on an up beat. Therefore, I'm not fighting my natural timing that I feel. For example, if you all were patting your foot right here, you would be patting your foot on the down each time. You're not going to pat it on the up. If you start playing and you try to jump in playing with me, like that, this hard one that you hear, almost every one of you is going to hit that on the downswing. You're going to start on the down. Now, if you haven't thought about your down ups, you might hit the next one on an up, which is supposed to be a down. Down, down, up, down, down. You might hit it on an up because you didn't have the, the, the work behind you in order to fix that. But now, what we're talking about is the down beats are always down swings, the up beats are always up swings, and that's kind of like a duh. Uh, down on the, on the numbered beat of the measure, up on the and beat of the measure, same kind of thing. But anyway, the right hand goes back and forth. Now, another thing I mentioned is a lot of pick depth. See, when you ask someone, how do you play fast, what they're going to say, generally, is you have to learn to play things slowly. 
and once you learn to play things slowly, the speed will come. Well, my idea on that is, yes, the speed will come if you know how to make the speed come, but if you never force yourself to move faster, your right and left hand will never know that they can. So that's what this video is going to be about. Okay, now I'm saying if you're going to play real slow, we'll, we'll learn a song here in just a second. We'll work on maybe old Joe Clark or something. Uh, as you play through, let me play old Joe a little bit and I can give you an explanation. I'm going to slowly play old Joe and I'm going to swing really wide. Now what that's going to do, I'm going to look at trying to get about a half inch of pick in there. Okay, that's a lot of pick. That's more than most people use. But we're talking about playing very slowly in order to do this. And you can see the pendulum going. I can feel the pick wrapping around my finger as I'm going through there. Okay, now I'm going to stop here and grab my pick. And if I don't change a muscle on my right hand, you can see how much tension I've got there. Very little tension. Okay, the tension, if you, if you put a lot of force with your right hand, which is going to slow you down because you're using your muscles, it's going to add more tension to your left hand, which means it's going to push down harder. Okay, so what you have to learn to do in order to get your left hand lighter, you're going to have to learn how to use less muscle in your right hand and start to use what, what, I, what I call momentum. Okay, so now I'm going to use a lot of pick with the right hand. I'm also a great distance away from my string, and that's the momentum driving through that note to give it maximum volume. And I'm, like I said, I'm using about a half inch. Okay, here's the rationale behind that. If you go to a jazz player, they're going to tell you just to choke up on the pick and use very, very little pick because you don't want to sink very much in there and you don't want to have a lot of movement. That way you can move really fast. The problem there that I see in, in a flat picker is that, see, the jazz players, they kind of reach down here and they turn that little knob, okay, and they get their volume up there. We don't have that option. Everything we get is going to come out of that piece of uh, more than likely plastic, or nylon in this case, which is a 73 millimeter, okay, it's just a regular uh, Delrin material pick, okay, uh, regular shape, medium gauge pick, medium strings, medium action, medium hat size, medium shoes, okay. And I've used the same stuff forever. I don't switch around a lot, which is something I'd advise also. Just find one thing, kind of settle in there. Okay, so I'm using a lot of uh, um, depth, and I'm using a lot of arc in my play. Now, getting back to the jazz player, they use very little. Now, if we did that in, in flat picking, we would end up missing our notes. So if you're one of those players that the faster you get, the more notes you miss, and you don't even hit the string, and you just swing at air, you can feel a breeze coming off your right hand, that's because you don't have enough pick going in the first place. See, when you practice slowly and use a half inch of pick, uh, you have the time to swing real wide and you have the time to go in real deep. Now, now let's say in the real world, you're starting to play fast. You don't have the time to swing real wide, okay? And you don't have the time to go real deep. But the depth that the pick goes and the arc that the right hand makes is determined by the speed of the play. Okay? So you don't have to think about it. You don't have any options there. You just can't go faster, uh, you can't go deeper than, you, than your right hand is going to allow you to go. Okay? So once you get this down, what's nice about it is all these people that have these different uh, right hand techniques for this one lick and this uh, you know, double down or a triple down or a sweep or all this stuff, it, the way I play, once I get it down, I'm kind of done with it. I don't have to think about the right hand, then I just have to think about what notes I want to hear. Okay? So anyway, um, I think that's kind of got that, and you'll, you'll be able to, um, you know, look at the right hand as we get going. But watch out uh, on your uh, down-ups in particular, um, as we do strings of eighth notes, which is what makes it sound so much faster, the downbeats are the downswings and the and beats are the upswings, and, and it doesn't matter if you're crossing strings or not. Anyway, let's start working on a song. I think we should work on old Joe Clark. Okay, as promised, here goes a little Old Joe Clark, and I think what I'll do is show you a, a couple tunes we can do, uh, maybe three, Old Joe Clark and Soldier's Joy, and we'll see what else we find. And these are just to give you some straight line melody stuff in order to get your right hand in, on, on track as far as the pendulum and stuff. And you'll see, I'll go slow through it, and then I'll speed it up, because like you, I need the warm-up time also, okay? I don't come in here like Rocky after uh, you know warming up in the dressing room for, for five hours before I come out for this video. So anyway, here's a little bit of old Joe Clark. You've got the tab there in the notes. And uh, let's go ahead and, and play through this one. Now, also, um, 
on some of the shots, pay attention to how wide the, the right hand's gonna be moving while we're going slow, okay? One, two, three, and four, and. <laughs> I'm, I'm reminded of uh, Ricky, Lucy, you got some explaining to do, is that when, uh, when you hear me playing at that kind of speed and that kind of right hand power, it's, I'm not using any muscle here. It's the weight of my hand going through there as a metronome and a uh, pendulum, but my strings are rattling. They're rattling like crazy. We're not talking about great tone right here. We're talking about finding ways to improve speed. Okay? So what's happening here is I'm finding where my strings are I'm working out my notes slowly so I know what I'm actually going to be doing. And then I'm getting it in, burning it into muscle memory so I don't have to think about it. Because one of the things in playing fast is you, the best songs to practice are the practice you've known, the songs that you've known for the longest. Because you don't have to think about them. Okay? So here, let me go ahead and bump that speed up a little bit on old Joe. And I guess I should say one other thing is that a lot of, a lot of you, and uh, thankfully so, have my uh, bluegrass workout series. It's the uh, the four hour bluegrass workout uh, now on CD, and a lot of people complain on that. They say that well, I can play at the slow speed. See the way the the, the project works, and this is in no way a sales pitch. It's an explanation. The songs go three times slow, and then three times fast. Okay, the three times, and and also you'll hear the lead played one time, and then it's just rhythm for two other times. So it's three times total slow, and then three times fast. The the full speed is so that you can get through a fiddle tune in 30 seconds by doing the first part twice and the second part twice. Now what we're going to try to do here is to get, is to get through it in 20 seconds or, or 22 seconds. We're just going to go a little bit faster. You, when you get up to that kind of speed you don't have to go much faster than that. But the hard part is getting to that speed. People say I can play the slow ones fine but I can't even touch the fast ones. Why don't you do an intermediate speed? Well no it doesn't work that way. What you do is you, you, you put the CD on and you bump it back and you try it again and you bump it back you try it again and after about 10 or 12 times trying to keep up with that speed you're going to get a little bit more you're going to get a little bit faster and you're pushing yourself to get faster that's what you got to do okay once your mechanisms are correct you will never realize top speed you'll just keep getting faster okay so one of the things that you'll have to do if uh, you don't want to go out and get the series I don't, doesn't matter to me the only reason I got it is so you would have backup tracks and that's what it's for uh, Record the rhythm just a hair faster than what you can do, okay? And then try to play along with it. Make the rhythm go about five or six times. And then uh, also be sure you give yourself a count off. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then get going, okay? That's what you'll have to do. So uh, otherwise, if it just starts, you never know when to come in, okay? So give yourself a count off first. And, and practice along with that recording. Or to make it easier, get the workout series. Okay, but um, we're talking about doing things that to push you to go a little faster. So let me run old Joe a little faster. See if I remember the way I did that. Uh, I may crash. You know, it really doesn't matter. Um, we're amongst friends. Okay. Uh,
there was the first part. That I did that actually twice. When I showed it to you slow, I went down to the low part, to the lower register. But I think you can get that out of there. That's about the kind of speed that you want to push for. But I would say, and without going back to the clock, that it was faster than 30 seconds. I'd say it was somewhere in, in uh, about 22 seconds. Which is kind of scary. Think of that, though. If you had it in 30 seconds, the first part twice, second part twice, meant that the first part twice is in 15 seconds. That means that the first part once is in 7.5 seconds. You got eight measures going by in 7.5 seconds, so you play a whole measure, or eight notes in less than a second. That's going pretty fast. Okay. Uh, another tune I want to uh, throw at you, just to give you a... Uh, so, you know, some other things to work on um, is a little bit of Soldier's Joy. And the reason I thought of doing this one is because when I was a kid, um, I remember I learned this tune off of a Clarence White record. Actually, I'd learned it before, but I, I learned this arrangement that I'm going to show you here from the, um, it's similar to the, what I remember from the Clarence White. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because I bought this record. It's actually, you know, an album. Maybe your uh, parents can tell you what those were. And, uh, it, it was so fast that uh, I, I couldn't believe it, you know, but I listened to it a few times and I started to learn it. It took me about five minutes to learn it off the record. It was like this. Uh, And, and I was able to hear that. That's easy to hear. And if you can hear it, you can learn it. Okay? But I guess, I guess the hard part was like a... something like that. I mean, it was really fast. And it may be now that since I'm older, it's like when you're a kid, you say, boy, that chair was really high. And it, it's really not. But I remember it being that fast. Point is, is that I learned it in five minutes. It took me three years to get the speed up. Okay? Don't think this is going to come overnight. But you're going to have to work at it. And that's the whole point of this video, is we're doing this the old-fashioned way. We're actually practicing and working and w learning techniques in order to get us to move faster. Okay? So anyway, let me slow down that Soldier's Joy one more time. You've got the tab there. You should be able to get it. Watch out for the down-ups. Make sure all your mechanisms are correct. Um, swing real wide while you're playing slow, okay? And then as you start to speed up, uh, you know, that, that'll work its way out. But you, ha you have to have something to practice that, that you know is correct from the beginning when you play it in order to start working on getting the speed up. Okay, so some of the old songs that you know, you may have to scrub them for a little while while you work on these new ones. And again, make yourself a tape of yourself playing rhythm. If this is a little faster than you can go, which is about this speed. If that's a little too fast, then that's the speed you want to practice it to. And don't worry if you make mistakes. Just run it back and try it again and run it back. Okay? Anyway, one more time through Soldier's Joy. This, uh, starts off with the intro, um, uh, just the four potatoes.
So I think you should be able to get that uh, without any real problems too. I'm trying to think if there's any other tidbits I ought to tell you on that, but I think that I think that ought about cover that one. There's one more that we'll do, and that's a straight a straight ahead pick and tune, and then we'll get into. Um, and in fact, we'll throw some stuff into this one. I think it's it's called Big Mon. And now, oh, I know what I wanted to tell you as far as the tidbit goes. Uh, Soldier's Joy is done in the key of D. We just did it in the key of C. Now, if you take a capo and move it up to the second fret, it's going to get your frets a little closer together. Okay, therefore, when you start to play through it, it should be a little easier. Well, don't do that. Get your, get your fingers used to spreading out far and getting a little extra stretch in there and getting a little more work done. And then when, you, and when it is time to actually play and not work, then put your capo on and, and have fun with it. But uh, same with this, with this big mon. It's supposed to be done in the key of A. And we're going to do it out of G. Okay? I guess you can watch me tune up here. Okay. Um, here we go with a little bit of Big Mon. break that's actually designed for speed. All right, so uh, one reason is because it's real tight together. All the notes are fairly close together. There are a few places where I stretched it out, but it, it shouldn't be that hard to get. Let me, let me bump it up a little bit, and you'll see what the whole thing's going to be like when you get it done, okay? Okay. Now, what you'll want to do is get the song down so it's memorized, and you can go around and around and around. As soon as you get to the end, you go back to the top, and you do that until you can't stand it anymore. In fact, I tell people, you've heard it on the videos before, do it until someone throws something at you, because that's how many times you have to do your reps. Okay? Reps is one of the keys to the speed. The other thing that you might want to do is get yourself a good, loud metronome or a drum machine. I use a drum machine. One of the reasons is you can either put a headphone jack in it and blow your ears out, you know, you can get, get it really up there loud, uh, or you can run it through your speakers, but either way it's going to be loud. And as far as a metronome goes, there's, there's one that's called a, a mini talk that I really like. It has a, it's a, a wind-up one, so it's not a quartz, so it doesn't have that little <coughs> kind of annoying sound to it. It actually, it, it'll, it'll sound like that. So it'll sound like a nice warm wood sound, but it's only about that tall, it fits in your case. Okay, and then what I find that I do is, is uh, put the metronome on, say at uh, full speed for most of these songs is going to be about 228 to 230 beats a minute. I set it down to 112 or 115 and then play double time to that. Okay, because the metronomes generally don't go as fast as we want them to. Uh, and that's a nice feeling. It's kind of like, like when you blow the end out of a thermometer, you know, you've shot it off the top of the register, or you've gone to the circus and hit that thing and it hit that you know, the uh, the geek test. So it's kind of nice. All right. So anyway, get yourself a drum machine or a, or a metronome. In fact, the drum machines, you can get them really cheap these days. Uh, you can program the sounds. Another thing that's neat about them is if you, say you put it on a Latin beat or a, or, or a conga beat or something like that, it's, you, you'll get a different feel to what you're playing. So it's, it's just good to use. So use a drum machine or so. Um, I don't, uh, you know, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, 
who is a brilliant professor, uh, Dan Curry, you may have uh, got his video. He's got a, an incredible video on homespun, and I suggest everybody to go and get it. And he said in a workshop one time that if just every day you would, when you practice or every practice session, you click your metronome up one beat, then at the end of the month, one beat per minute, then at the end of the month, you're probably going to be 20 beats a minute faster. And that's, uh, that's probably true. Uh, what my approach is more an aggressive approach where I say take the song you've known the longest and play it twice as fast as you can and don't worry about the mistakes because you're only practicing in the privacy of your own home and there isn't anyone else there to watch you. Okay? Uh, and, in, in order, and what you're actually doing is forcing your hands to move faster than they know they can. Okay? So I'm, let me go ahead and run this song up uh, one more notch. Big Mon, here we go. I knew I could get it that once. Uh, now also, let's look at a few things here that uh, when you do hammer-ons, pull-offs, and slides, they're going to help you in your, uh, to gain just that edge of speed because you didn't have to hit it with this side, with, the, with your pick hand. Mm -hmm. There are a couple places here that are, are uh, what I would call like speed licks or, or, or special runs that you can use if, if you're running out of uh, ammunition, like you're starting to get tired. This last run, um, let's see. This part. You'll notice I pulled, did a slide back. Two downs in a row. So it's down, 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 up. There's a, a hammer on there, so I had two ups in a row also. Okay, so what we've done is, is three fiddle tunes of, in which it's basically straight line melody stuff and, and what your job is, is to work it back and forth, obviously with the uh, uh, downbeats on the, on, on the downswings, upbeats on the upbeats, until it smooths out. Now don't try to get it as fast as what I was doing, that's going to take a long, long time. What that is, is giving you something to shoot at because if you see one person do that, then you have to realize you can do the same thing yourself. Okay, what we're going to do now is work on a right hand technique. It's going to turn your eighth note sound into triplet sounds. All right, so I'm just going to hit on the third string, give you an example of what triplets are. What this is going to do, and this is like a reality check as far as getting your speed up, and I want you to, in a second, play along with me while you're doing this, uh, while you're sitting in your uh, music rooms or living rooms. Okay, first, let me give you the examples of what triplets are, because this is what's going to help speed your right hand up a little bit. Here's your quarter notes. Right, one, two, three, four. Here's your eighth notes. Okay, because they're going one and two and three and four. And now we're going to go to triplets. Triplets is when you hit three notes in the same amount of time as one beat. Now we've got triplets going. Okay. Now you hear the accent. One, two, da, 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 da. one, two, three. What you have to do with triplets when you start playing them is you have to accent the first one and then leave the other ones um, mm -hmm. normal, but, but definitely accent the first one. That way you can hear the boom, 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 like that. Okay? Because if you didn't do that, here's my triplet. If you didn't do that, then you wouldn't, here's without an accent. And you can't tell if I'm doing eighth notes or not, okay? But it's still doing this. That's the difference of the accent. Okay, now, this is going to get, if there's anyone else in the room with you now, run them out. Okay, because this is going to get kind of obnoxious. All right? This is what I want you to do. I'm going to start doing the triplets slow. Now, I'm going to go down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. About that. All right? Down, up, down, down, up, down, down. Just follow along now. Okay, I'm speeding it up a little bit. 
listening. Wanting to, wanting to stay with me. You feeling the tension? Let's go a little faster. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. Okay, here's a reality check. Your right hand's working pretty fast, but really what you're doing is this. That's how fast you're playing. Okay? It's really not fast at all. So what, here's the point of this exercise. We're going to do some songs in triplets, and uh, what it's going to do is make your right hand work really fast, but it's not going to make your left hand work all that fast. And the reason for that, in my humble opinion, is that if you don't get this right hand used to moving quicker, then it's not going to know it can. One way you can do it is by taking these fiddle tunes you know and jack the speed up on it. Another way you can do it is to take a whole new exercise like these triplets and start to move that wrist faster. And you'll see it'll work for you. It'll loosen it up. And what it's also going to do is take your mean average, what you consider now to be a fast speed, and move it up just a notch. And that's all we're asking for. We're not asking for miracles. So now what we're going to do is take a quarter note break to old Joe Clark, which is something like... And then we'll do the second part of the sound, something like this. Two, three, four. Okay, so what the exercise is, is taking each one of those quarter notes and playing them as a triplet. And now also, the reason on the second part, I went to, when I went to the F, I just held it one time is because we're going to do a triplet arpeggio. All right? So we're going to hold the F chord and go up and down the chord. So you're going to go in triplets also. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay? Now when triplets go real fast, you'll have to make a decision if you want to go down, up, down, down, up, down, down, and hitting two downs in a row with very little space between them, or do you want to go to hitting them going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. I cross back and forth. To me, it, I go to a threshold in speed, and then I have to go, uh, and I can do it going down, up, down, down, up, down, down, and then I'll have to switch to the down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay? So it's at some point, and on this arpeggio run, I'm going to go down, up, down, up, Okay? And in fact, you ought to practice that a little bit. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. That's what you're trying to get. Like that. Okay? So let's see how we're going to fit the whole thing together. Here we go. Old Joe Clark, everything's triplets. Until you just can't stand it, and then you can get off for maybe a quarter note or so. Okay, one, two, three, and four, and... We'll start you over again. Let's let's start a little slower so you can play along with me. One and two and three and four and.
I can feel that in my right hand. That's a real good workout. Okay, then another kind of workout that I want to do is again with triplets, where we're going to be, um, we're going it, to, we're going to go to double time. You're going to like this one. Say you had a song like Wildwood Flower, and I'll play a, a break to Wildwood Flower. Right? Very simple break. Okay. Now what we're going to do is take that, and each time we hit um, the melody note, we're going to hit two other strings past it in, in a roll, in triplets. So we're going to hit the third, for example, the, the roll that we're going to do is hold down the first uh, fret second string, and you, the melody note's going to be on the third string, so you're going to hit that, hit those three notes. And it's, you can go down, up, down, it, let's do four, up, four sets of them. One, two, three, four, okay? But still going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So it's still four beats going by, okay? The next set is going to be when you're going to go on the fourth, third, and second string. Okay, you got a whole uh, s a set of those four times, and then the fourth, third, and second string open, and then break out of that and go into a regular five strum, six strum. Now here's what we're going to do: we're going to add the melody to Wildwood Flower to that mess, so it'll sound like this real slow. going by that one measure. There's a lot of stuff going on. Now we're going to shoot up to another part. So let me show you what we're doing here. What we're trying for. Why would flower normally be this way? to amaze your friends at parties. Okay. So what I'm actually doing is, uh, again, I'm going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, and I'm going across three strings. So the workout before in Old Joe Clark was just doing it on one string. Now we're, now we're getting the three and it gets a little more difficult because your wrist has to move wider, okay? But I'll guarantee you that if you can get it up to this speed, when you play regular old Joe Clark, you're going to want to go at this speed because that's how fast my wrist thinks I'm going, okay? Now let's see how we're going to finish this. Let's see. One more time. So I'm sliding into the uh, fifth fret on the second and the fourth string, and I'm just doing straight through the four, three, two uh, strings. So on the fourth set, I have to move back. And then into the C again. Now into F, you're going to uh, go to the third, second, and first string. Then you're going to home stretch. Here's a, a nice tag. And what it is, is the, it's your D7. You're taking the F sharp note off of the first string and you're moving it on over to the fourth string. And you're doing the same arpeggio you did on the F chord in uh, Old Joe Clark. Okay, then get rid of everything but take your ring, your ring finger, which is poised and ready, go to the fourth string third fret, and just straight down the line. So 
So it's, it's a triplet, and then it's an um, eighth note by itself. Okay? And then you're in. So you got this. And there's some fun with the wildwood flower that will speed up your right hand incredibly. All right, friends, here's another one that's going to have the same type role as what we just covered in the wildwood flower. It's called Bury Me Beneath the Willow. And I'll go ahead and run through parts of it. There's a couple things I want to show you that um, may be somewhat difficult, but that's about it. Otherwise, it's going to be the same old get that roll going, give you another exercise to do. Okay, so it's, uh, let me play the straight melody to bury me beneath the willow out of the chord forms that we're going to be using. All right, uh, let's see. exercise actually showed you what I'm thinking about when I'm doing this triplet part, which is going to sound incredibly fast, but the right hand is doing the work and the left hand doesn't know what the right hand's really doing. The right hand's going through a roll mechanism, okay? So one place to look at, besides the, the, the patterns that we have coming up, is this one run. And it's, th you're hitting them all. You're not going to uh, hammer on in, in any of them. And it's going to be open to four on the fourth string, open, two, three, and then you, you land at the second string open. And when you practice this, you practice all seven notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And go down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And you'll notice that when you do it at this speed, your breathing stops. Okay, so here we go and bear me beneath the wheel. I'm not going to go real fast. And uh, the roll pattern is going to be just like what we did before. Okay, so starting on the third string, third, second, first, and I got three pickup notes. This is this is the speed we're playing it at, and that's a reality check. But if you notice. When I was going, this hand didn't change, okay? It went from here, it was still going in the same speed. So when you heard that fast drum, which now you're getting accustomed to, sounds, you're getting used to this. Now you're doing it on a straight line. That's what they call straight line, so a single notes one after another. And it seemed faster, okay? It seemed like it went brrrr, okay? But this hand didn't do any different. So when you get used to this stuff, I'm telling you, your right hand's really going to uh, in increase in its speed. 
Okay. I don't think there's anything more to say on, on that one. Uh, just work it out. Make sure your down-ups are correct. If they're not, you'll crash, and that's one way to know. Okay? Let's go ahead and move on. I've got one more picked out for you I think you're really going to like. So this song actually comes from one that, that's fairly old. In one of the tapes I did, we called it the Bluegrass Boogie, and that was this. So now it goes into C, and really what it is is a 12-bar blues, or now at this speed it's a 12-bar boogie. So I'd like to show you some triplet runs that work real well in here, and you can take these runs and put them in other songs. I mean, it's not just for this song. The same with the uh, techniques we worked on all the way through this. It's uh, find other songs that this will work in, and uh, then then the run will actually become yours to use whenever you want to. But the run I liked, I found, I figured this one out. Let me do it for C first. I'll show you what I mean. And it's a it's a we're using hammer-ons and pull-offs in some of these to help us get through because the speed is so fast. It'd be about like that, uh, in theory. Remember, it takes three years. Okay, don't worry about it. Anyway, it's a run that goes this way. It's going to be... Uh, let me do it slow a couple times. We're going at two and three and four and... Okay, one more time. Two, three, four. Okay. And I'm going to go down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay? Now that's for C. You can also do it for G. Okay? Now if you turn it into a loop, it would be like this. same thing for D too, but now you're doing it in closed position, which is really nice because then you have it to move up and down the fingerboard as you need it. But what we're looking at in our D is really this. These last three fingers actually resemble this C. So what you have is, is take this, let's see how, I think it starts this way. Etc. Etc. Okay. Now it wasn't that. It's not a hard run. And in that case, I mean, it's not. It's not as bad as digging a ditch or, or uh, you know, trying to replumb a house. So it's not that kind of hard. But it is difficult to do, and it takes some time to get it down. So you'll have to sit there, and you really got to watch the right hand, left hand, to make sure they're going together. Another exercise to work on for speed again is triplets, because I really feel the triplets are the things going to bring you over the edge <clears throat> onto the next level is to do runs like um and what it's doing is hitting the scale but hitting the note of the scale and then the note right before it and then back to the note and that's one set and then you go into the next one you can either go back to this G or go to a G sharp so I'm really just going up the scale Etc. 
etc. That's one way to go, and you can. Um, uh, in fact, there's a spot I can put this in there. If I if I make it a D one, here's a G, here's C, here's D. If I needed an E run, in fact, let's change it just a hair. Let's go to D. There's our D, and make it this one. Okay, and that's going right up the D scale. Except we're going to miss this one. So we have this now. Okay? <laughs> yeah, in theory we have that. And you, you can actually keep adding on to that as you're going up. So we can put that in here now, instead of going... Now we can go this way. And you can keep going, and you can just keep going on it. Anyway, that's going to be a great role for you. Let, let me know how that works, okay? Um, and I think, I think that ought to cover that, uh, that little pattern there. And, and let's just go ahead and um, maybe play something out and, and, and see what we've got. Okay, this last tune I've got picked out for you is a little bit of Little Rock Getaway. And some of you may have uh, learned it from me before. Um, it's a killer tune, and I'm going to go through the positions with you real quick, and then I'll play through it, and you'll kind of get an idea of what we're talking about. But it's going to start off with a D at the 12th fret. The next one is an look like an old time A7 at the 9th and 10th fret. The next one is going to be an A minor, which will look like a D minor at the uh, 8th, 9th, and 10th fret. And then the next one is a C7, doesn't look like anything that you may be familiar with, but really what it is, is it's taking this chord form, the C, and taking the, the high root and dropping it back, that turns it into a C7. Next is an F, looking like a D, then an A7, it looks like an A7, then a D minor, it looks like a D minor, and then a C diminished, that you can make it look just like a D7, because we're only going to hit the first three strings. Then we're going to do a run that's another triplet run that sounds like this. Let's see, here's the speed we're going. Two, three, four. And then we'll go back to here. So it's going to be... Okay, then it goes to this one, E7, to the A minor, to the C7, to the F, A7, D minor, C diminished, and then that same run again. Now we're going to, into the second part. So let's go to the first. Now what we're going to do, now that you've memorized those chord positions, so quickly and so well, we're going to hit the, uh, the, the chords in a triplet pattern. And we're going to hit, start on the first, it's a reverse roll. First, second, third, and then back to the first. And that's all you do. Really, it's, it's going this much time, okay? So you hit a triplet pattern for each one. So slowly, it's going to be one, two, three, four.
go into the second part. Now on this run in the middle, that was lucky. On that run there, um, you got a, a series of hammer rounds and pull offs that occur in here. And, you, and that's what's going to help the right hand out just a hair because at this speed you need all the help you can get. So it's going to be. Did you hear the pull off there? I really can't talk and do it at the same time. So it's a. a pull off. Pull off. Now this is a run we did before. I may have led you astray there. Yeah, it slows down at the end to wind up for this next set of triplets. Now all of those you're hitting. And it's good to get this little bounce going. Otherwise you may lose track of how fast you're actually going. At the end of that, I want to just because <laughs> I tell you what, when you're doing this stuff and practicing this hard, this intensely, it pays to put a little rag across there, <laughs> just in case. You just never know. Okay, you just never know. Okay, now we're back to the top. We're going to work through the second part. Now this last run, you, you just start to move up there and hit it. When the beat comes, hope that your little finger's at the eighth fret. If it's if it's not, then uh, you know something like that. But you have to move. That's a long way to go. Okay. The second part is it works out of the F, and then the C diminished, and then the C. And it'll be a, a series of three new runs we have to get. And they still work out of triplets. One, it'll sound like this. One, two, three, four. plays the first part half a time. <laughs> now here we can go either way. If you're playing with someone and they're going to start over again, you'd go to the G chord there, or the 5, brings you back up. If you're going to end it, you'd use this end. Off that last note, okay? Let me get the second part again. Now you're actually hitting all those. Okay, goes by pretty quick. And then, now this is the same run. It's that same thing. Now we're doing it out of this long A position for the C. That's what I did. Rest again. Then it goes back to the F. Diminish. C run. Now here's where we're going to G. So I just stopped it there. up. So let me try to put this all together for you. <laughs> we'll see if I make it through. But if I don't, I'm amongst friends. Yeah.
I knew I was going to stop it, so I used the C run all the way up. Okay. Anyway, I think that'll be a fun one for you to give you a good workout. And uh, I remember when I first learned the chords, if I could do that, I was happy right there. So anyway, it's got a lot of good chords in it, and it's a fun one to do. Hopefully you already know it, so this will enhance whatever version you already have. Okay, I think that this that may wrap up what we need to talk about on this uh, uh, video on gaining speed. One thing is, is as you're gaining speed, you, you, you need to learn a few things, like we, what we talked about earlier. Learn to play slow so you can do it fast. Play in your burnout sessions, like what we're talking about is just jacking the speed up there and really going for it. And you do that by, for example, using the workout series. Just keep clicking that song back, and after you go through it, maybe realistically a hundred times, you'll be able to go through it at that regular speed, the, the, the fast speed on there. It's not really super fast. It's just fast, okay? But it's not, nothing that's a, un, a, it's not an unachievable goal. And then you'll find that after you gain that speed, that that seems comfortable. And you'll wonder why you couldn't have done that a year ago, okay? So anyway, you just keep working at it. Then you start working into these triplets, all right? And that's really going to help you out as far as um, moving up to the next plateau. Then when you have the right hand control that you're going to need, what I've tried to show you here, then you're going to have to come up with the runs with the left hand and with your mind in order to utilize the new speed that you've gained. Okay, because you may just be like a big Dalmatian puppy with big feet, you know, just stumbling all over yourself. Because you really, now you have what, you, what it takes here, but you haven't built your imagination level up to the point that you can actually take off with something. And you do that by learning many, many tunes and listening to a lot of different players. Okay? Anyway, let me take it out here. I want to thank all the people at Homespun Tapes and Happy and Jane and all our friends through the years. You've kind of watched me grow up here in Homespun Tapes, and I sure appreciate you sticking with me. And uh, let's also thank all the people behind the scenes to which at the cameras that I'm not supposed to be looking at. Okay, folks? Anyway, let's take it out with something here. Let's see, what should we do?